Hey there everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and I hope you guys are having an amazing day so far. I know I am and I've had just a great week so far. Honestly, I spent my entire week creating these projects for this video, but they were really, really fun. So it was honestly fun for me to do. So if you've never heard of TikTok before, it is an application on your phone that you could download. And basically when you go on there, it's a ton of different videos and they range from comedy to DIY to cooking to just like funny skits. There's dancing, there's lip singing, there's a whole variety of stuff, but I love exploring the DIY section. And sometimes I come across Across projects that literally have like 5 million saves or 5 million hearts and to me that means that people are super interested in them so I figured why not today recreate some of the most viral TikTok DIY projects to see how they actually turn out and I'm gonna recreate them for you guys. I ended up coming across four really great DIY projects and I also kind of wanted to phase out some of the ones that were really random that had like 18 million hearts and it was literally like painting a tray. I was like that is so boring. We need complexity but not nothing too hard and if you guys happen to be on TikTok too I do have a couple dance videos. No All right, I'm not gonna do that anymore. You can follow me at I'm Drew Scott. I'll put it on the screen if you are curious. Let's jump into the first project. So this first project I came across is by Laura P. Janice, and I'm gonna pop it up right here. Now this particular TikTok only has about 5,000 hearts. However, I have seen many TikToks prior to this doing a similar technique that had millions of hearts, but I just cannot come across them. I've seen them so many times and I just didn't save them. But however, Laura did an amazing job on her projects and it inspired me a lot to create a couple of canvases. And I did a set of three because my canvases were on the smaller side, but keep in mind, if you purchased one large canvas from the craft store and a couple containers of spackle from the dollar store, I actually got mine at Dollar Tree. Um, you can create a really, really unique textured piece of art that looks like thousands of dollars and it probably cost you under $25. Jumping right into the first project, the great thing about this one is that the tools and supplies are super simple and easy. So I used a couple of canvases I had on hand, some lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree, and then also a spackling spatula. And basically what I did was I scooped out large chunks of the spackle with a spatula and I just put plastered it onto the canvas and you're going to want to press decently hard to really get it to kind of mend with the canvas and become one and the more you add the more texture you can get and basically the texture comes from the excess spackle kind of coming off the sides of the spatula so I did a total of three just because I felt like one was going to be a little bit boring but keep in mind that when you do this project you can make them as large as you want and you can also paint on top this is a great texture base however I do think if you're really into that minimal kind of Scandinavian vibe, creating just a tone on tone white one like I'm doing here is a great way to add some simple texture to the wall. So I let these dry overnight and I came up with a little set of three pictures that I love. Our next DIY project is by Bales Wilkie. I probably am butchering that, but this has 1.3 million hearts. And she basically created kind of like a chandelier out of yarn tassels, I guess you could say. And it ended up turning out so cute. I feel like this is a great element to like maybe a baby's room or a young girl's room, or like even at a party or something like that, you can use this as kind of like a decor piece. And she mentioned in her caption that it took eight hours, but it was definitely worth it. Nine skeins of yarn and six to eight inch gold chains. And she said it cost around $90. However, I feel like I created this for much less. I simply used three embroidery hoops and four skeins of yarn. So I think I spent around $30. I didn't even bother with the chain, but let me share with you guys how I recreated this yarn tassel chandelier. For the yarn chandelier, I actually just had all of these items in my stash already. So I had three embroidery hoops and a random collection of cream and white toned yarns. Then I cut out a seven inch tall piece of cardboard that I'm gonna kind of use as my template. And this is how we're going to be making the tassels. So you're going to wrap it around however many times you want the thickness of your tassel to be, cut off an extra piece of yarn and slip it underneath all of the little loops. And you're gonna tie this off at the top. This is going to be the very, very top of your tassel. So tie it in a nice tight knot and then pull it off of your little tassel template. And next what you're going to do is lay it on top of another piece of string. And this is going to be kind of creating the top portion of the tassel. You're going to tie that in a double knot as well, and then snip off the bottom loops to create the actual fringe. And that creates your tassel. So you're going to repeat the process. I actually ended up creating a new template out of some chipboard as opposed to cardboard, just because it was a little bit more sturdy. Um, and you're going to repeat the process so many times. This is the long part of it for sure. It probably took me about two, maybe three hours to to create all of the tassels needed, but my roommate actually did end up helping me. We had a fun time creating these tassels, which was really nice and good. And we probably created, I would probably say around 50 or so tassels. 
And keep in mind that I didn't go out and purchase yarn for this project, so I just wanted to use ones I already had in my stash. So I just did a selection of random kind of neutral tones, but if you do want a more cohesive look, I would suggest probably sticking with the same yarn for all of them. Then I laid everything out on my table, and you can kind of see how I laid my tassels around the rings to make sure I had enough of them. And the next step in the process is to remove the outer part of the embroidery hoop. We're only going to be using the inside, and I'm going to be double knotting every single tassel on to the little embroidery hoop ring. So you're going to go around, double knot it on, and then you could trim the excess tails off. But this is going to be another kind of repetitive process of tying all the tassels onto the rings. Once you have everything tied off, this is where the challenging part of the project comes in. I thought everything else was really simple, kind of time consuming, but easy. This is where the challenging part comes. So I cut off three random pieces of yarn and attached them to three points on the largest loop because we're going to want to hang this up. So I grabbed all three strings, as you could see, held it in the air, and it looks pretty amazing when you do that. All the tassels hang really nicely. And I grabbed my tripod just to hang this off of while I worked on this because what we're going to have to do is attach our our second ring in there and then our third ring in there so for the second ring you're gonna do the same thing by tying on three pieces of yarn you're gonna want three at least just so it hangs level and you're gonna put this up through the bottom and the hard part about this is just tying it on and making it even so what I suggest doing is just wrapping your yarn around the outermost ring and doing just like one simple knot one that you can easily adjust that isn't like a double knot or anything if you just tie it and loop it around one time it'll hold it but then you can go in and double knot it once everything is nice and secure. So then I added in my third section here and the third section was also hard. You have to kind of get in there and attach it to the second section. That way everything kind of cascades down and that finishes this piece off. Now my roommate Marie actually sent me this one and I thought it was such a cool, unique idea. I never thought about using marbles before, but this was by Easy Entire. Inch I'm sp saying that wrong for sure. Interior. This is a TikTok that they posted and basically they used marbles and some candle holders with some spray paint to recreate almost these like bubble, kind of like Z Gallery modern-esque looking candle holders. And I thought these are really unique. I'd never seen anything like this before. And I love the idea of gluing marbles to something and then spray painting it to almost give it the look of like a bubbly effect, if that makes sense. I have a couple of old CB2 candle holders that I was honestly gonna donate. And I decided that I was gonna repurpose them into these candle holders and I love the way that they turned out. So let me share with you how I did these ones. Another super simple project that is also very striking. We're going to be using some marbles and these CB2 candle holders I've had for like a year or so just in my stash. Um, I've never ended up using them. So I was like, I'm going to repurpose them. So basically what I did was I got these marbles off of Amazon and I love how perfectly cylindrical these are. So I followed the girl's tutorial and just glued the marbles down using my Gorilla Hot glue sticks, which you guys know I love. Not sponsored in any way at all. They just really work great for every single surface. So I glued down a ton of marbles to kind of create this bubble effect and this just reminds me of something you would see maybe like at an art gallery if you're really into like an art deco look or like a z gallery kind of glam vibe i feel like this is perfect for you so i went around and i glued a ton of marbles on just very randomly there's no rhyme or reason to this at all i just wanted to build up some form of kind of artistic form and i did it on the second one as well you could do as many as you like um, and i'm sure you could probably find um some great candle bases from like the dollar store or something like that and then i used my new favorite gold spray paint. I've never used this before. Look how stunning this is. I'm going to try to link it for you guys below if they have it on Amazon. I got mine at Lowe's and it looks incredible. So I gave this a nice couple coats of the gold spray paint to make sure everything looked like it was one solidified kind of welded together piece. And in the end, it looked absolutely incredible. You're going to want to let it dry in between coats and flip it around to hit every single nook and cranny. And once this is fully dry, you have a new set of candle holders. And 
And finally, last but not least, this is the project I feel like a lot of you guys have been waiting for. If you are an avid TikToker, you would know that the foam mirrors right now or the cloud mirrors are super, super popular. Everyone has been posting them. Now, I personally didn't find like a huge love for them at first. I was like, this looks so strange. Like it doesn't look amazing. It honestly literally looks like you took spray foam and sprayed it on a mirror. It looks like insulation or something. So Vienna Sky posted this video here and it really got me intrigued. I love the way that she painted her. So I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and paint mine as well. So I picked up some of the spray foam that you need on Amazon, which I'll link it below for you guys. And then my friend James just recently moved to a new house and he had an old mirror that kind of broke in the process of moving. The actual frame of the mirror broke off of it. So he was gonna donate it or give it away to, I believe, someone that was working at his house. But I was like, I need that for my project. So I kept the mirror, got the spray foam, some spray paint, and we are gonna be creating a cloud mirror today. So let's get into that project. Wow, am I excited about this project. This is the mirror base James let me have. It's a three foot circle. And as you can see, the actual rim on it or like the frame of the mirror broke off. So I, it's just a plain mirror at the moment. And what I did was I laid down a drop cloth because the foam that we're using, which is this stuff by Great Stuff Big Gap Filler. I found this on Amazon as well. Link this below for you guys. Give it a good shaking. You need to shake this up for probably a minute, it says on the can. And then I used a little bit of sandpaper to rough up the edges. And the reason I did this was because a lot of the tutorials I saw, people added this on top of a framed mirror already. So it kind of had something to grip to, but I realized that this gap filler didn't have really anything to grip to on the mirror. So I wanted to scratch up the surface just a bit so it can kind of settle in the scratches. So how you're going to do this is you're going to attach the little nozzle on the top. And I just did a zigzag pattern as the girl did in her TikTok video. Um, her TikTok will be linked below if you guys want to check that out. But I just did a zigzag back and forth pattern. And keep in mind, this is going to expand double the size as it currently is. So I didn't want to add a ton at first because I wasn't sure how large it was going to get. Like what if it expanded 38 times the size and like filled my living room? Who knows? So I was like, I'm just going to do a little bit, let it kind of expand. And if I want to add more, I could do so. So it started expanding and this is kind of like what it looked like as it was expanding. And then this was when it was fully dry and such a cool texture, but the yellow color is just not my favorite. I'm not a fan of how yellow this is. So I added a couple pieces of just like scratch paper all around the entire edge. And then I used this color called matte clamshell. And I found this at Lowe's as well. I'll link it below for you guys. This color just neutralized that yellow so much and turned it into like such a pretty soft kind of taupey beige color, which I love. This was such a great color to add on top of here. And you're going to want to let it dry between coats. And I added a total of three full coats just to make sure I hit every single part of the mirror. But keep in mind, you could spray this black. You could do it white. You could do a color if you wanted to. I love, love, love the way that this mirror turned out. And I just pulled off all of my little masking papers and tape pieces, and that finishes off your brand new foam cloud mirror. Those were my DIY projects for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this recreating viral TikTok DIY projects video. Um, I love TikTok. I'm on there every single day. So I figured why not take my love for TikTok and recreate some projects that were also really cute and share them with you guys. So if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I would love to know if you guys would like more of these. And if you have seen any other projects on TikTok you would like to see me create on my channel, definitely send me the link over on Instagram DM and I could probably make that happen for you guys. But I'm not gonna keep you here for much longer. So if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every single week and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you are notified every time I upload a brand new video. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, Lone Fox Home. I'll let you guys go now. Enough selfless, shameless, whatever the word is, promotion. I'll catch you in my next one. Bye guys.